Okay, guys, today we're going to read Kiana's Iditarod. So, ready? So, this is just tells us about the Iditarod. So, it says, The Iditarod, a race that's run a thousand miles to Nome, a husky named Kiana, who made the trail her home, a man, a team, Alaska bred, adventure was their creed. They would struggle till the bitter end to claim this mighty deed. See the mountains? And there's a map right through the back. Say it starts here at Anchorage and it goes all the way up to Nome. Now this year it's not doing that. It's going out here and then it'll come back. The birch dipped icy spears of light to dance upon the scene. The morning of the last great race, the dog lot was serene. The sled was packed, the runners sharp, the harnesses dry and clean. Atop their houses, the husky lay, breathing frosty puffs of steam. So here they are. This is the people's home, and they have a, a snowshoe. And then here they are. They're laying in their home on top of their houses. They like to lay out in the sun and sleep on top of their houses. The trucks were packed in the early light on the ice of the settler's bay. Howls and yips filled the air. For months they had trained for this day. The man lifted Kiana down from the dog box where she had slept snug in the straw. We could have been last, he said with a grin, but first is a tough place to draw. So these are the dog boxes they tra um, transport the dogs in so that they can see outside, but they can be safe inside. And he's pulling her out. And here are the other dogs all hooked up to the dog sled. And see, here's the other ones. The people are pulling them out. Oh, here they go. The young husky leader leaned hard in her traces, eager to be on her way. But the man checked each harness and petted each dog until finally he reached for the sleigh. So here they are. She is ready. Oh, look how excited the dogs are. But he loves his pet, so he makes sure he petted them all. And here it says, yeah, I did her on trail start. Five, four, three, two, one, the man shouted, hike! Because they don't tell the dogs to go. They say, hike! And Kiana pulled hard for her stride. Beyond stretched the trail a thousand miles long. Silent, lonely, untried. So here they all go. And these are this is the uh, this is the ceremonial start. This is not the real start. This is the one in Anchorage. It's all the people. They, unfortunately, this year they didn't get all the people, but a lot of times they do. And here's another map. See, so here's Anchorage is where they do the ceremonial start, and then they'll come out here and they'll actually start the real race. See, this is where our guy is. This today is a McGrath, and then he'll. This year, now in odd evens, they go one way during the regular race, and in even years, they'll go another way. But this year, they're going to come down here and then turn around and go back. But, and there's that lake they have to cross up to Nome, which is way up there. But this year, we're not going to make it to Nome. 26 checkpoints lay somewhere ahead, a mountain range or two. There are moose and wolves and nights so cold, they turn your mittens blue. So there's a mountain range right here, and there's a lake to cross. So you can either cross it here, or you can go all the way around. Oh, and here they're putting the, the dogs to bed. See how he's cutting down the things, the trees, to make it the bed, bedding for the dogs? Because remember, the dogs are the most important. On the frozen Yetna River, they stopped to make first camp. The dog slept warm while the man chopped wood by the light of a miner's lamp. The miles fell long behind them. Squetna passed dark in the night. Still Kiana pressed on, bred to run. The motion was sheer delight. But when they do lay down, the man takes care of each dog to make sure they have a warm place to sleep because those dogs are very important. And then the man is cooking the dog's dinner because remember... The dogs have to eat good food to keep running. And then he'll finally get his stuff out and get him a place to sleep. 
When they plunged down the cliff at Happy River, a moose stood smack in the trail. Whoa! yelled the man as he fired two shots at the deadly beast turned tail. That's a big animal. And they're not very friendly. Here they are. Out in the wilderness. See, there's not a lot of people out here. Not a lot of... There's no houses. There's no cars. There's no McDonald's. It's just the open wilderness and forests and mountains and lots and lots of open spaces. The spruce tree stood as sentinels on the shores of Potilla Lake, guarding the trail toward Rainy Pass take that the dogs and drivers would take. The air was crisp and silent. The snow was drifted deep, and the mushers spoke in whispers, hoping the peace would keep. So there they all go. Look at the animal in the tree. See how far back? Here's the lead dog. And look how far back. You don't even see the musher on here because he's so far back. But up here, here's the musher. And look how far up the lead dog is. That's why you need a trusty lead dog. Oh, look at that, how pretty that is. They started the, the climb after four hours rest up to a sea of endless white. In bitter cold, they reached the top, a moonscape bathed in light. Here's a mountain. See how lonely that looks? But you can see lots of stars in the moon. Roan River Cabin was a welcome sight as the dog struggled down the pass that night. A 24 layover was the rule of the race, and the Roan was the ideal resting place. So they have to stop for a day to give the dogs a chance to rest. See the other dog back here? And this is actually a rest stop, but look at it. There's a cabin in the middle of nowhere, and that's a great place to stop, is a cabin in the middle of nowhere. Uh-oh, what's going on here? Next morning, Kiana woke and stretched to chase her dreams away. She eyed a stranger in another team, then scampered over to play. But the big Mackenzie Husky lunged. His chain, chain rang taut and in the cold. His teeth were bared, his anger deep. No pup should be so bold. Stiff-legged Kiana held her ground, young though she might be. A leader's blood and pride were hers. This brute would surely see. They circled then, one fast and lean, the uh, other old and strong. The Mackenzie was the first to break, admitting he was wrong. That's the Mackenzie there. This is Kiana. This is McK the Kinsey. At breakfast, Kiana shared her meat. They romped throughout the day as the northern lights streaked across a midnight sky, curled together the huskies lay. So he at first tried to, to give her dominance, saying he was in charge. But she was a leader. Even though she's young, she said, nope, you are not going to tell me what to do. And at the end, look what happened. They slayed together because she said, I'm not going to back down. And he he understood he, she wasn't going to back down. Ah, oh, look at this picture. At noon, they pulled into Farewell, 200 miles from home. Weak dogs were loaded on bush planes. That means they, they take them home. See the bush plane here? They'll take them home. See the dog in the window? If they can't do it, they have to go home. Worn out, they would never reach Nome. So if the dog can't make it, they got to go back home. Let's see how many dogs he has now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And he had 16. So he's back down to another number. But they put him on a plane and they send him home. Because remember, they weren't going to hurt that dog. School was out early in Nicolia. Children scampered to meet the teams. March was the month for the dog racing when Iditarod filled their dreams. So look what kids dreamed about. They want to they wanna be dog sledders one day. Is that what you dream about? I bet not, but maybe now you will. This is what they dream about. They want to be dog sledders. Oh, look. <gasps> Remember the booties? Look what the dog's got on his feet. Four hours on, four hours off. Rest when the sun is high. Eat, then sleep, then hit the trail. Or faster teams 
pass you by. The Tanakhna winds past McGrath. That's where Arnabusher is in McGrath. The night it was 40 below. That's really cold. Bright cotton booties Kiana wore as she splashed through the overflow. Because remember, we saw Mrs. Um, Mrs. Freedom's um, booties that somebody gave her. Uh-oh, looky here. The coffee was hot in Opry. Eight drivers slept hard on the floor. When one man moved, the other stirred. They kept one eye peeled to the door. Because if somebody left, they're all going to start getting up and leaving. So see them all? Look how they all slept together. These are all the drivers, the mushers. All right, here we go. It was a gold rush tra trail they traveled next, past towns long covered with dust. Poor man, cripple, ruby, and long, roadhouses abandoned to rust. Down the mighty Yukon, they raced as the slower teams fell behind. The man fed them broth and doctored their feet. He was tireless, tender, and kind. He made sure their feet are good. Here's some of the stuff they cook. Because remember, that dog has to be good. Now look at the buildings. They're all abandoned. There's nobody living there. They're out in the middle of nowhere. But he's got to keep her feet good. Otherwise, she'll be sent home. Uh-oh, let's see what happens now. Galena was past Naluta ahead when the wolves slid out of the brush. The call of the wild sang on the wind as the team surged ahead with a rush. So here comes wolves. That's another danger out there. Inside the checkboard at Caltag, weary mushers plotted and schemed. When the fire died to coals, they finally slept, but the trail was the stage for their dreams. So they'll come in and eat for a few minutes, and then they'll talk maybe and stay for a little bit. But this is what they want. At Unicalit, the teams turn east onto the ice of the Norton Sound. The houses at Shkalik fought the wind with a cable set deep in the ground. These names are hard, let me tell you. Look at this one. This is a... That's one of the names. I'm definitely not from Alaska. But look, here's the here they are. And you notice there is nothing out there. Now remember, if it's frozen, they could go over that lake. But that's a chance they have to take. Otherwise, they have to go around. And the shortest distance is a straight line. But that's a big risk they're taking. Out on the ice, Kiana was lost. She didn't know which way to go. The trail was gone. The sky was white, buried by raging snow. All around her head, it swirled. Her muscles screamed in pain. Every step was back. Every step back was a moment lost. A foot the storm had gained. Then up ahead, a stake appeared, solid in the ice. Kiana knew the trail was found, but the team had paid a price. Exhaustion and Exhausted and frozen, they stumbled along till nighttime grayed to dawn. Beyond the checkpoint at Koyuk, only nine dogs would push on. That means they had 16, and they've lost seven of them. They can't go on. So here they go. Let's see what they do. Icebergs blue and frosty sparkled like gray in the sun. As they rounded the cliffs near El Elim, Kiana broke into a run. Fifty teams were behind them, four more for Kiana to catch. Two hundred dogs had gone back home. Six teams had been forced to scratch. Scratch means to give up and quit. They couldn't go on. They're, they're done. They had to go home. Uh-oh. A Galvin, a Galvin, they raced by some reindeer. There wasn't a moment to spare. The miles fell away as they ran toward Nome, fleet as a snowshoe hare. So there they go in the background. You see them? And there's the big reindeer. In White Mountain, the old women met them with berries and caribou meat. Caribou is kind of like a deer. They left while two teams were still sleeping, the snow quiet beneath their feet. So see them? They don't have much out here, do they? They have a snowmobile, but these people live very simple lives out here. But they left so that they left the teams behind them. Uh-oh, here we go. 
The three teams raced in single file as the sun dipped low in the west. It was now or never, win or lose. Could Kiana prove she was the best? There's 20 miles left to race. They're all in a line. Here they go. The other mushers drove with headlamps aglow while the man preferred the night. So Kiana crept by in the shadows of dark out of the range of the light. So the other people had lights on their heads, but Kiana didn't have any. She was in the dark, so she snuck right by them. Here they are. When they were past, she heard the man yell, and a crowd began to cheer. Her weary feet picked up the pace as the finish line drew near. Her canine heart swelled with pride. It was a gallant thing she had done. As they crossed beneath the famous arch, Kiana had rice was one, so she won the Iditarod. And there she is getting her prize. And look at the man's beard. He's a brown-headed man, but look, there's so much snow and ice, his whole face is frozen almost. And so are the dogs. So there they all are. That's the end.